This is Planet 76, your source for all things Philadelphia 76ers. We've got another great episode coming your way today, and we're cleared for takeoff. Let's go. Welcome, everybody, to Planet 76, episode 89. Correct. 90. 89. 89. Welcome to a new episode, everybody. My name is Michael Troy. Here to Sixers. This week has been, well, what was our last game we talked about? The box game? Last game. No. <clears throat> last game was the Wizards. Wizards. Mm, yeah. Right in the middle of our so, eight-game streak. So, yeah, I mean... Nothing too really crazy in Sixers land this week. We have one major focal point in this episode, <laughs> but we'll get to that eventually at some point in this episode. So, Troy, just general, maybe just your general thoughts on the Sixers since we last spoke. I mean, we've, me and Troy have texted on and off about sure. the Sixers. Well, I don't think we did this week that much, but we usually do, but, um, yeah, just your general thoughts on them this week and, and what you like, what you disliked. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, recording on Monday after the Bulls game at home. We have a you know game against the Bulls on Wednesday on the road. Um, but, yeah, a couple games this week, obviously, Hornets, Pacers, and then the Bulls tonight. Um, you know, won those two games on the road against Charlotte and Indiana uh, easily. You know, one twenty-one to eighty-two in in Charlotte, and then one forty-one to one twenty-one on the Pacers. Just really, really dominating uh, those two games. And you know, as part of you know, we we titled last week's episode "Taking Care of Business" because that's exactly what the Sixers have been doing. Um, you know, beating teams that are supposed to beat, doing what they're supposed to do, beating you know some of these teams by significant margins. Um, and it's interesting. I think I saw you post a little bit about it or touch on a little bit. Um, but you know the Sixers, due to this run they've been on, have been getting a lot of recognition from the media. Do we really care about that? You know, some people do, some people don't. Some people do. And I think yeah. what you said was like, why do we even care what people, you know, the opinions that change every mm-hmm. single week? And I agree wholeheartedly with you on that. Um, <clears throat> you know, because you know, then I saw something that the Sixers were number one in the power rankings today. Like, ooh, awesome. Um, you know, but then you come out and you put up 105 against the Bulls in a double overtime loss at home where Embiid fouls out. Harden scores four points. Um, Maxi takes a lot of tough shots toward the end to try and win it and was unable to do so. And so a frustrating game there, but all streaks come to an end and the Sixers did put themselves in better position um, you know, this week with eight, you know, again, with an eight game win streak and, uh, just unfortunate that it does end the way it does against the Bulls at home in double overtime. Uh, but all good things come to an end. And again, the Sixers are now, uh, real close with the Celtics in the standings, uh, because of that and, and trail the Bucks by about three games now. So, um, and B's doing what he's been doing, what, nine, ten, no, 10 straight games of 30 plus. Um, so and pretty remarkable stuff there. Um, how about you? Yeah, before we get into the yeah specifics of, of tonight's game against Chicago, how about you? Just you know your your feel generally on where the team is and what they've been doing and this streak and yeah yeah. Now I think you put it perfectly. Our last episode, the title that was Troy's idea. Mm-hmm. The title I think encompasses very well the past. Well, not very well, but the past week of Sixers, I think, also applies this week. Sure. Because you beat the Cavs. Great game. I don't know if you caught that game. Phenomenal game. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah. No, Harden did play. Phenomenal game. Phenomenal win against a team who, I mean, the Sixers struggled, I think, defensively a little bit that game because, the, or not, not defensively, offensively, because the Cavs are very good defensively. Right. So the Sixers struggled a little bit that game, but they ended up winning. Then Pacers, Hornets. 
those are the teams you got to beat. And they did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they actually beat the Hornets by 20. And it involved them putting up 140 points without James Harden. So yeah. that's great. Yep. And 20, I don't know if you 20 have any... and 30 point road wins. We'll take that every every day of the week. Right? We will take that every day of the week <laughs> and twice on Sunday. <laughs> but I don't know if you have any particular thoughts on those two games. Mm. To be honest, I didn't I didn't really watch those two games. I felt as though, you know what? Nothing that or what what I should say is the, nothing will change if the Sixers win this game. They need to win this game, both games, and they did. Right? Or the, was it with a? Was it? Did they play the Pacers on Saturday or Friday? So they played the Hornets on. Oh, I think it was Saturday. Hornets I think it was Friday, Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry. The they beat the Pacers by 20 without Harden. Right. They played yes. the Hornets Friday the 17th and. Saturday the 18th against Indiana. Which, by the way, Harris... You know what? You mind if I riff a second? Let's go. <laughs> Tobias Harris, man. That Pacers game, he was phenomenal. I don't mm-hmm. see anybody talking about that. Because yeah. I think I posted about it the other day, but every time Tobias Harris plays poorly, he sucks. Right. Trade him. <laughs> the contract, we know all about that. Sure. But when he plays well, I hear nothing. It's cricket. <laughs> it's silence. I hear nothing ever. I'm the only one, and obviously you here on us on Planet 76. Yeah. I'm the only one that says anything about Harris playing well. Right. And everybody comes out of the little works. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that's true. Well, where are you when Harris is playing <laughs> well? Why don't you say something instead of just agreeing? Uh, agreeing with me is fine, but spread the word because yeah. we... we we know Harris can be inconsistent, but sure. when he's played well, he's been very good, and he's had his moments this season. We all know that. We understand the contract thing, but if you were in his position, you would take it. Up to, you would also take that money. Right. It's not his fault. And you'd be yeah. absolutely dumb if you didn't. Right. So I don't know why people are faulting Harris for taking the contract when they would do the exact same thing if given the chance. Right. That's crazy to me. Like, that's actually insane to me that people are doing that. Still, yes. four years later, people are still doing that. So <clears throat> when Harris plays well, you need to acknowledge it just as much as you acknowledge when he plays poorly. Okay. You Rant heard over. it here. You heard it here. And I am uh, I'm in complete agreement with that. Michael, it's not like it's, you know, my thing is like, for us on Planet 76, it's not our first rodeo. I mean, we're 89 episodes into this. We've talked our fair share about Tobias Harris. We've mm-hmm. shared some of the very same things that you just shared over and over. And we're dating back multiple seasons now uh, you know, of this kind of conversation. And uh, I find it very interesting because that's the first time we've really hit on that, mm-hmm. specifically the praise or the lack of praise when he plays well. But the... Um, you know, they come from everywhere when he has a poor they shooting do. night, or when they come he from underground. Well. They come from the sky. Yes. They come from the everywhere. Right, and now, yeah, now that's gonna bug me because I'll be noticing that more. So I'll be hypersensitive to seeing that on social media or wherever, and in conversation, and the contract will be brought up again. And you know, we, we've talked a ton about that, but yeah, Tobias in that game that you mentioned against the Pacers had 24 on nine of 12 shooting. He had five boards, four assists, couple blocks. Um, you know, he played um, semi-well tonight against, on defense, he made a couple of good plays on DeRozan. Um, you know, shooting-wise tonight against the Bulls, uh, Tobias was 6 for 11 at 14 points, 9 rebounds. Um, so had had a decent game there. DeRozan went 10 for 22. Um, you know, with, again, the bulk of the game, it seemed like Tobias was on him a good chunk. So, yeah, I'm... Um, Tobias, 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 man, what a, what a player! All right, so yeah, then the, then the game, not too much to say, obviously against the Charlotte Hornets, one twenty one to eighty two. Uh, notably, they you know held the Charlotte Hornets to twenty eight points in the second half. I'm reading that correctly: thirteen <laughs> points in the third quarter and fifteen crazy. points in the fourth quarter for the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> that is crazy. That's a really low scoring half. I, mean, I thought it was low tonight when the Sixers only put up one hundred five with with ten extra minutes. Uh, but to do that is remarkable defense there. I get that it's the Hornets, but uh, come on. Hornets shot five for <laughs> 35 from three. 
five for 35 from three. That is abysmal. And I will not lie, I did not catch that when I was watching some March Madness Friday night. Mm-hmm. Um, Same here. So 121 to 82 for the Sixers in that one. But tonight's game against the Bulls. So a chance to extend the game to ex- extend the streak to nine games. Um, a a uh, whatever you want to call it night celebration of sorts, you know, to recognize the. 1982-83 championship team. A lot of former players, former staff uh, were in the house for that one. Vibes were at an all-time high. It's like, you know, Dr. J said, yeah, man, this team is as good a chance to, you know, win it as they've had in recent years. And then they come out and lose to the Bulls. So um, tough pill to swallow, I guess, especially considering all that's at stake when it comes to the Eastern Conference standings. We've talked about it. We're going to talk about it until the regular season ends. I mean, the Sixers don't have many more games at home. Um, you know, you look at the schedule. They're hitting the road for four. We'll talk about that. Then, they, yeah, they only have four more games at home. They have seven on the road. So, yeah, considering what they're up against, this is going to be a, a tall task to see what they can do to uh, climb the standings in the East and maybe catch the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, but, yeah, tonight... 109-105 loss and beat fouls out early in the second overtime and there was some questionable shot selection um, you know from Tyrese Maxey trying to do it all Harden was just not good offensively so you couldn't really rely on him to go get a bucket he tried once and got stuffed and then Tobias had a shot you know mid range pretty open and missed that I think would have put the Sixers up late in that in the running room whatever time that was but. Um, yeah, tough pill to swallow, but just one game, it just sucks to lose. You know, it just sucks to have that streak snapped at home before you hit the road for what's going to be a tough road stretch. So uh, I don't know if you have anything else more to say on that one, but 109-105, double OT. Embiid, 37-16 and 16 in this one. Um, DeAnthony Melton, I will shout him out. He, he played phenomenal. Uh, I know that's where you were going to go to, but <laughs> what, what about DeAnthony Melton? How about him tonight? Yeah, I'll start with DeAnthony Melton. I don't mind, <laughs> as I'm sure if you've listened to to any of this show at any length, in any length, I should say, you know, I I will not shy away from talking about the Anthony Mellon because he was phenomenal this game. I think he had, now I will say, I, I should have said this before, huge disclaimer, I was only able to watch overtime and double overtime, but what I did see of Melton, three steals, one on Zach Levine I mean, I, this is pro- it's probably it's probably chance, probably the right. most prominent one that that everyone else saw too. He was he played very good defense on Zach Levine, but Zach Levine kind of put his shoulder into Melton. Melton fell over. He got right up. Didn't complain. Hey, where's yeah. my foul? He didn't say that. He ran straight back. Now Zach Levine's just jogging down the court. I'm not sure what <laughs> he's doing. Picks picks his pockets. Takes yeah. his lunch money. <laughs> and amazing defensive play by Melton, just countless, like the thousandth time that something like that's happened this season for D'Anthony Melton. He's just so good on the ball defensively. But this game, yeah, it's James Harden was not good. He 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 was not good. He was two for fourteen from the field, only five points in forty seven minutes. Points. He was zero for six from three. He did have 12 assists, so okay. He had five turnovers. Just really an abysmal a shooting minus 11. effort from yeah. Harden today. And I think that causes a lot of issues for the Sixers because Harden shooting poorly, he's cold. Then Joel Embiid fouls out, and then what? Okay, give the ball to Tyrese mm-hmm. Maxey. That's a no-brainer, right? Well, then you have Maxey forcing shots at the end to try and get the, get the lead tie the game, things uh, that things like that. He forced a couple deep threes. He forced a layup where he thought he got fouled, but he didn't. Just kind of poor shot selection. And I'm not saying yeah. it's okay because it's not, but I understand the circumstances surrounding that. So I'm willing to be a little more lenient, I guess, give a little sure. more le- leeway there. And... I just think the main thing is, yeah, you you touched on it. The Sixers could have maintained that two seed, but now that they dropped down to three, 
half game behind the Celtics. They don't have a ton of easy games left. Not only because they have a lot of road games left, but the teams they're playing on the road, it's the Western Conference. It's the Suns, Warriors, Nuggets at home in a week. Yeah. Or Nuggets in Denver right. at home in a week. You're running out of these gimme kind of games. You got to take yes. full advantage. And it is good that the Sixers had an eight game win streak, which, by the way, every time they're on the verge of nine in a row, they lose. <laughs> they almost had nine in a row a few months ago, which that, right. that, I call that win streak, by the way. Roll the clip, Charlie. Yes, roll the clip. Right here on the pod. But yep. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a game you got. I, I it just sucks. That's that's a game you really got to win. Obviously, it's a yeah. lot harder to win when the beat fouls out, but you got to win those games. Harden has to be better, and I'm confident that he will be because he's James Harden. He's been super super consistent all year long. He's been a huge reason as to why the Sixers or even where they are right now, especially offensively. The things he's done for this team offensively just totally cannot go. You you cannot talk about those things enough, his passing, his scoring. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so crucial to the identity and to the just keeping the ecosystem of this team alive and – I, I, I think he's going to be fine. He, he he has had some stinkers this year, just putrid shooting performances, but it happens. And the flip side is it's not like the Sixers were playing some unrelenting Chicago Bulls defense, let's be honest, but it, it happens. I'm not really too worried about it. The thing I am worried, though, still is the standings and, and how many more games the Sixers can really win this year yeah. and get the get the second even even first seed at this point yeah good point you know i think the with james harden the, the performance he had tonight 47 minutes two for 14 five points like that's the anomaly and that's the yes. good thing you know we can we can come out of this and be like okay that's that's not gonna happen hopefully again <laughs> you know and and um you know i like how you shared i think it's spot on that you know, we're a little more lenient with Tyrese Maxey and his late game shot selection because of the situation. Yeah. And again, the hope is that's an anomaly too. The hope is that doesn't happen again. The hope is, you know, Embiid doesn't fell out again or whatever, you know, in the playoffs. The hope is that, you know, James Harden can be more of a reliable option for you um, in those situations, in those moments. So really strange game. You can say whatever you want about how the Sixers arrived to overtime with the Chicago Bulls at home. But the fact is in overtime, the situation there was very, very rare, um, if we can say it that way. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. It does hurt to drop it because, again, of what's coming and because of the Eastern Conference standings, where they are at uh, today. Sixers 48-23, and 23, and they're hitting the road. So Chicago again, they get a second chance. So it reminds me of the game, you know, a couple weeks ago they played Miami at home, lost. They went to Miami on the road without Embiid and won. So hopefully they can uh, do the same in Chicago with or without Embiid. Um, then they got Golden State, Phoenix, Denver, and then they, they come back home for two against Dallas and Toronto, oh, and Lord. then Milwaukee and Boston um, on the road and then home. So tough schedule ahead. Um, the almighty Eastern Conference standings. So uh, let me pull that up real quick. We've obviously touched on it quite a bit. Um, and we're going to continue to do so. So, Michael, your thoughts as this, the Milwaukee Bucks are 51-20, and 20, Celtics 49-23, and 23, game back for the Sixers 48-23, and 23, uh, followed by the Cavs, the Knicks. I don't know if you saw Joyce Randall at 57 in a loss Dude, today. how insane is that? Um, that is insane. And then the Brooklyn Nets, Hawks, or Heat, Hawks, Raptors, Bulls battling for those last several spots. So, Again, not many games to go, and the Sixers sit three back uh, of the Milwaukee Bucks. How are you feeling about that? I know you'd be feeling a lot better if it was two, if they had uh, pulled it out tonight. Yeah. But uh, I mean, is this are these next four road games like you know Sixers go one and three, it's over kind of thing, or like what do they need to do to? Yeah. Well, what needs okay. to happen? I'm scared. I'm kind of scared. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. We yeah. keep it real here on the podcast. But what I will say, listen, if the Sixers can go on the road and beat the Warriors, Suns, and Nuggets, I, I'm willing to forgive them for this loss against the Bulls. 
As, and, and then they can tur- if they can turn around and beat the Mavericks at home, I mean, we're talking a huge win. Just as a collective, huge. This is, that's huge if they can go 3-0 on the road. Now, I'm not expecting it, obviously, because you, you just never know. You just never know. And what what I do, I mean, they only have really one game left where it's like, okay, this is a surefire win, and it's in Brooklyn on the last game of the season. Last game of the season. In between now and then, this is it for the Sixers. Like, they need to win, at least win more. At least if they go 500, okay. But I think they need to, they need to win absolutely. They need to win all these games. They need to win every single one of these yeah. games. I don't – like, this is it. This is the last – week and a half two weeks whatever of the season three weeks yeah and they need to win all of these games on the road they need to come home beat dallas and toronto they need to go on the road beat milwaukee this is it this is it there's 12 games there's 11 11 games left this is it they need to win all of these 11 games yeah so i'm with you i'm a little scared a little worried at this point started to get my hopes up a little bit because they were two back and it's like they haven't been two back in a long time and you know they're getting hot at the right time and then you drop one to the bulls which is just a stinger um so 11 to go 11 to go for the milwaukee bucks let's for 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 right now let's just forget about the celtics in the equation as far as like one seed um but let's talk about the chase for the one there's 11 to go forget about tiebreakers because i don't know what that's going to look like either but just to tie the Bucks, hypothetically, just to tie the Bucks, say the Sixers go nine and two over the last eleven. That means you're counting on, um, counting on the Bucks going six and five, and the Bucks have an easier schedule than the Sixers do. So like nine and two to six and five, are the Bucks really going to lose five of their last I eleven games? It. Probably not, right? So all right, let's say the Sixers go ten and one. That means the Bucks have to go. Um, you know, seven and four is that, you know, I don't know, but like, it doesn't look great and that's just to tie them. So unfortunately, again, unfortunately it just doesn't look good. Could it happen? Yeah, sure. But this it is doesn't the, look good. This right is going to be, have to be a miracle run for the Sixers quite literally. Right. Because you need some help and you're down three with 11 games yep. to go. And you, you know, that that's going to require the Milwaukee Bucks to stumble and lose some games that they probably shouldn't. Um, and the Sixers to win some games that they probably wouldn't, you know, if it weren't for what they need. So it's going to be hard. Um, realistically, I think it's uh, appropriate Sixers fans to start pre- preparing for the two or the three seed. Uh, not that you haven't been already doing that, but. You know, I don't, I don't know where you can even. Now they've been as hot as anybody, obviously in the last nine games, but as hot as anybody the last couple of months. But uh, you know, it took a while early on to get above 500, and and that's coming back to hurt a little bit. I, I don't think there's anything else to say. Um, you know, the the slow start to the season is affecting yep. them in this pursuit of the one seed now. And could it happen? Sure, but again, it's going to take a a really hot finish and a pretty mediocre ish finish for the bucks in order for that to happen and i don't see it happening <laughs> if i'm being honest all right sixers fans so again that's planet 76 episode 89 good vibes decent vibes not really sure what to call it on this one but uh the sixers again currently sitting at what i don't even know 48 and 23 and a few games back of the Bucks in the loss column. 11 games to go, and the Sixers are hitting the road for four games. We'll see what happens, and uh, we'll be back for episode 90 to break it all down. Peace. If you are a Philadelphia 76ers fan, this is the podcast for you. Planet 76, a weekly podcast covering all things Philadelphia 76ers. We'll see you next time.